Hi everybody, welcome to After School Adventures. This week I thought we'd have some fun with chemistry and chemical reactions. Uh, we're going to be using some household acids and bases. So that would be vinegar and baking soda in our case. And we're just going to have a lot of messy fun and see what happens when we throw those two together. Let's just get rolling. All right, guys, so for our first experiment, uh, I kind of wanted to just do the bare bones so you could really see what's going on. So I have uh, a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of vinegar, two tablespoons of baking soda, uh, and then I just have a cup where I'm gonna mix it all together and then a pan because this is going to overflow, so I don't wanna make it a mess. Uh, and then I have a spoon. And that's all you need for this one. And let's see what happens. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our water, which yes, this is water. I just added some food coloring just for fun. Why not, right? So I'm gonna pour that in with our baking soda. And we're just gonna mix it together with our spoon. Make sure it's all dissolved. is making a really pretty color. Stir it up nice and good. Make sure it's all dissolved. It's looking pretty good. And we're going to put that in here first and then we're going to add our vinegar and we'll see what happens when a base and a acid mix. There goes our base baking soda, and here comes our acid, the vinegar. Let's see what happens. Woo! Okay, so that happened really, really fast, right guys? And that's always going to happen when you mix those two things together. So you want to be careful because, it, like I said, it can get messy, especially if you've got something tall and skinny, it's going to go whoosh. So let's talk about why this so what was that incredible reaction we just saw? So I've been referring to our vinegar as an acid and our baking soda as a base, but I haven't really said what that means. So every liquid is on a scale. So we've got acids here, and we've got bases here, and then right in the middle uh, is neutral. So that would be something like distilled water. So our vinegar is sitting somewhere around here, our baking soda is sitting somewhere around here, and what makes uh, acid an acid, besides just its kind of ac acidic taste that you can tell right away, right? Um, but what makes it really an acid is the fact that it has way more hydrogen ions than anything on this end of the scale, right? So when we have that reaction, what we're doing is this guy and all his extra little hydrogen ions is passing it over to this guy who has way fewer, right? So then we have that chemical reaction. And then hydrogen ions, so those are just little particles. Uh, same thing that makes up everything, right? We all have little particles and hydrogen is just, a hydrogen ion is just a certain type of that. So let's look at another way that this reaction can work. All right guys, so now we are going to explode a bag. So what f you'll need for this one is one of these, it's called a binder clip or something that, um, you're gonna have to clip this bag in half. So something that'll let you do that. You're gonna need, um, this is a quarter cup of baking soda and then half a cup of vinegar. And I just threw some food coloring in there just for fun. Uh, and then just one of these, just a plastic bag. This is uh, just a, large, I don't know, uh, just one of these generic freezer bags, I've been informed they are called. Uh, what we just need is something that's going to be kind of airtight, uh, because otherwise uh, our bag won't explode per se, stuff will just leak out of any of the holes, right? So this is about the size we're looking at, here, my hand in comparison. And it doesn't really matter how long it is, but a little bit longer is better because we're just going to tie it in a knot on top and then we also need to split it in half. So let's just get going. Pour the vinegar in first, just into your bag. Okay. 
There it is. All right, and then we're just gonna go pretty close to where the vinegar is and we're just gonna kind of bunch it up and twist. And that is where our binder clip comes in. We're just gonna clip it closed. So this will create a separation. And then we're gonna throw in our baking soda on top and it should hopefully not leak through to the vinegar yet until we get to the safe zone, right? So there it's sitting. And then um, we're gonna tie it off on the top. So one thing is you don't want your bag to be too big because otherwise it'll get all puffy but it won't explode, which is the reaction we're going for, right? So I'm gonna try and make it pretty tight here. And then you wanna really ream on this knot to make sure that it is tight as well. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Now, the most important step of this experiment is to get to the safe zone. So if it's warm enough, you can do it outside. Uh, I will do it in my bathtub. Let's go give it a try. Okay, welcome to my bathroom. I'm here with my ex soon to be exploding bag. Uh, I've got my bathtub here. Uh, and I'm just going to plop it in. I'm going to release the clip, maybe give it a little shake so everything gets nice and combined, and then we'll just watch the show. So, first we just lower it. I'm going to have to try and do this with one hand so you guys can see. So, there it is, sitting in the ba bathtub. I'm going to take my clip. Oof. There it is. Undo that. Let it kind of shake up and there's that same reaction we saw before, right? But now the air has nowhere to go. Okay. Whoa, it's really tight. <laughs> we gotta shake it up a bit more to get the baking soda in with the vinegar. Well, I guess I made my bag a little bit too big. So, we didn't quite get the explosion we were looking for. I'd do it again, but I'm running out of baking soda. But uh, if you do want it to actually explode, then you just need to add more of each component, right? And then just, yeah, sit back and watch the show. But you can see our bag is nice and puffy. So we had a lot of gassing off there, right? Our chemical reaction released a lot of gas and it, it didn't exit out like it did with our first experiment, just mixing into the air. It had to stay in the bag and then it just whoosh. Wow, that was something. Too bad it didn't quite explode, but hopefully yours will. So what exactly was happening with our exploding bag? So, for our exploding bag, we were witnessing the chemical reaction in an enclosed space. So, a place where it, the air or whatever was happening had nowhere to go, right? And um, I talked about chemical reaction before, too, but I didn't really explain what it was. So, the chemical reaction in this case is called neutralization. So, remember we had our sliding scale. We had acids, and then we had bases and then we had neutrals. So it's uh, by passing on those hydrogen ions that we talked about, everything is moving closer and closer to that middle zone of neutral. So when that neutralization chemical reaction um, happens, in this case, it's not always the same, right? Uh, but in this case, we're creating um, some new substances. So one of those new substances is the carbon dioxide gas. So we had some air in our bag, but not a lot, right? But then once they started mixing together, uh, some of our components, some of our little ions and molecules and everything like that mixed in, but then some of it got left out. So that dioxide, which was joined with something else to make it into a liquid, got separated. And when dioxide's on its own, it becomes a gas. So it reverted back to its gas state. And so it started expanding. 
And that's what happened to our bag. That's why it started to puff up and hopefully explode. So it can be really cool, right, to learn about these chemical reactions. But sometimes you just want to have some fun too. So let's do our next one. Hopefully this one will just be kind of cool. Okay, so our last experiment is just kind of something fun and cool. Uh, so what you're going to need is a baking soda canvas. So it can be as big as you want. I mean, the bigger the better, but sometimes you don't have that much baking soda. So whatever you have works. Uh, and then you're going to need some plastic bags. Just a small kind will do, or the sandwich bags will work too. You're going to need some vinegar. And you're going to need some food coloring. Oh. And some scissors as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to paint with our vinegar and our baking soda. So we're just going to throw some vinegar in these bags. Not very much needed at all. And then you can make whatever colors you like with your uh, food coloring. So I've got a red here. So I'll add a drop of that. And I don't know, maybe plain red is just boring, so I can add some blue. Yikes, those ones can be tough to get off. Yeah, careful that you are probably going to stain your hands when you're doing this, but that's all right. All right, making a nice purple. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it better when it's uh, done. So you're going to seal it up tight. And then I just recommend a... Uh, a bowl or some sort of dish to kind of set these all in. For now, I'm just going to set that one aside, sealed up tight, and then let's do another color. So, let's see, purple. I really like orange, but I don't have any yellow food coloring, unfortunately. So maybe I'll go blue and green, make kind of a turquoisey color. That's nice. There's my blue, and pop open my green, throw that in there, oh, that was a lot of green, probably going to end up more green than blue, but that's alright, we like that color anyways, shake that up, give it a little mix, keep it all in one corner, seal it tight, and set that down, alright, and I'm going to make a couple more, and then we'll check back in. All right, so I've got four colors sitting there in my dish, just kind of all in one corner. And here's where the next step comes in. So you take your scissors and you cut the teeniest, tiniest little hole on one corner. Oh, yeah, I got it. All right, so I'm going to set that down. And you just want to make sure to keep that side up. That's why you need that dish, right? And that's why they need to be sealed tight. So cut that teeny tiny corner, and then these will become like your, your markers for this art experiment. Teeny tiny. That one was kind of big. All right, so then you're just going to want to gently tip it to try and control the release. Ooh, see that? Hmm, that's not a very nice color, actually. <laughs> here, let me try and get you guys a better view here. So that's how it ended up looking, but then as you draw, you're going to get that reaction. So it's just kind of a fun way to play with this, this kind of stuff. Wow, I did not make very nice colors. I hope you guys have better luck than I did. I made two versions of black. I maybe added a little bit too much food coloring. I went a little crazy with it. Let's try the red. I'm sure this one should turn out. Should I write my initials? S. 
e all right and just have fun with that just make your little designs it's kind of like abstract art i've got a fork here i could kind of mix it up make some colors and it makes a fun paste <laughs> And then you can kind of just mold it. I don't know. Just something where we could get a little messy, get a little creative, and just have some fun with chemical reactions, right? So I hope you guys had fun learning about the acids and the basics. That is everything I have this week, but I will be back, of course, next week with another one. So I hope to see you then. Bye.